That's a big deal. I have my colleague here in the front row, Nabil Qureshi, who's a medical doctor by profession and then picked up a couple of degrees in theology since he's one of our uh, newest apologists. If you're going to debate someone and they've provided you with information, you might want to, you know, take a look at what they've provided to you. Ibn Masud actually believed that there should be 111 chapters in the Quran. And today's Quran has 114 chapters. <coughs> Ibn Masud, the greatest teacher of the Quran, named first by Muhammad, if you're going to learn the Qur'an, disagreed that chapter 1 of the Qur'an should be a part of the Qur'an. He did not include it. Chapter 113 of the Qur'an and chapter 114 of the Qur'an. So 1, 113, and 114, he does not include in his Qur'an. Why? Ibn Masud considered these chapters to be prayers that Allah had divinely inspired, so they are divinely inspired, but Allah did not intend for them to be a part of the Qur'an. So I'm going, to grant, I'm going to grant it, he did hold this position. But the question is, did he die insisting upon this position? But the question is, did he die insisting upon this position? That's a big deal. So I'm going to grant, I'm going to grant it, he did hold this position. But the question is, did he die insisting upon this position? It appears that Ibn Mas'ud did not die upon this position. We don't know when Ibn Mas'ud held the position that Surahs 113 and 114 were not part of the Qur'an. However, we do know what his final recitation was. As I said, his reading was transmitted through three different chains, and they include Surah 113 and 114. It goes against your argument. Ibn Masood, we have authentic chains of narration from Ibn Masood going back to him, coming to us today by, via continuous bombardment of reports, uninterrupted reports. And Ibn Masood's recitation transmitted by his students is exactly what we read today. Thanks for bringing that up and pointing that out.
Thirdly, there are possible explanations for why Ibn Masur did not include Surahs 113 and 114 in his codex. And that's because he saw the Prophet, peace be upon him, reciting them as incantations for his grandchildren, and he never heard the Prophet reciting them in his prayer. So he thought that they were part of the Quran. So I'm going to grant, I'm going to grant it, he did hold this position. But the question is, did he die insisting upon this position? If you're going to debate someone and they've provided you with information, you might want to, you know, take a look at what they've provided to you. We already have direct proof from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him himself, that these two surahs are surahs from the Qur'an. Refer to Sunan Abu Dawood, Book 8, Hadith Numbers 1419 and 1457. So it appears that Ibn Masroud did not die upon this position.